Namaste. Welcome to the 20th session of our course Yoga and Positive Psychology for Managing Career and Life. Today, we are going to discuss yogic interventions for making mind a friend. Some of you might be wondering why this is topic mind as a friend because this is my mind and it is supposed to work for me and if it is supposed to work for me naturally, it is bound to be my friend, but that is not the case. We will be looked at what are the causes of the emotional issues, problems and challenges. And if you recall, these are about fearfulness, anxiety, dependence and sentimentality. You may also recall that we examine these ailments, we examine these sources of emotional distress and what we found was that fearfulness is nothing but excessive concern, anxiety is nothing but excessive alertness and excessive attachment with the outcome of my efforts. Dependence is excessive trust and aversion and attachment, more sentimentality. So, all these major sources of distress are actually started with the mental or emotional faculty which are useful, all these have some evolutionary significance. But when these faculties are overused, they turn into the source of emotional distress. So, a friendly mind is the productive and functional mind, but the same mind can be dysfunctional and the reason for dysfunctionality is that my mind probably has started working against me. It has become an obstacle in delivering my role. It has become obstacle in me experiencing well-being. It has become an obstacle in delivering my duties and my disposition. The title of the session is uh, Mind as a Friend and How Yogic Interventions Can help us making my mind as a friend. In order to understand a mind, we may look at the a basic biological feature of uh, our mind or our brain. We discuss in the earlier session that mind is not limited to brain. So, we are not going to repeat that, but brain is a very significant uh, expression of mind or you can say seat of mind. Brain has uh, three major uh, parts, uh, reptilian complex, limbic system and neocortex. Reptilian complex is mostly related to the survival and reproduction. Limbic system emerged first time in the primitive mammalians and that is the center for emotions, empathy, parental care, parental role and that is the significant feature of the human brain. All three parts of the brain have different roles to play. Reptilian brain is related more to instincts, dominance, survival and this is that part of the brain which gives a sense of territory. What is my territory? What is your territory? What is my boundary? Where my ownership uh, exist where from where your ownership starts. So, that is the reptilian brain's job. Mammal's brain job is nurturing and experiencing feelings and emotions and that is the seat of maintaining relationships. It is the mammal brain which is the basis of parental care, relationship with the kids and kins which eventually result into formation of community. Human brain as I told is the newest part, neo mammalian brain, neocortex as it is called that is the center for language, ideas, concepts, artistic vision etcetera. So, this is the newest part and that is the center 
where most of the exeduo functions or most of the complex cognitive activities take place. So, if we explain function of yoga from the perspective of these three brains, of these three parts of the brain channelize the power is emerging from the reptilian brain and mammal brain and help the human brain to take charge of things. Please remember the Kathopanishad, the, uh, the allegory of chariot about human self. So, man is the rian, senses are the horses, charioteer one who holds the rein is the intellect and that controls it and the direction of the chariot is given by the self, the Atman which is the true owner of the chariot. Uh, chariot. So, so, yoga help us uh, to keep the human brain as in charge of our activities. How it does that? Uh, in, a, in, a, in a simple terms, how it does that? Limbs of yoga and uh, we can reflect on our previous conversations, how these different limbs help us in managing our emotions and managing our intellect. In that way, they govern our behavior as well. Yam, uh, which are Satya, Ahinsa, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparigraha, these set the boundary conditions. These uh, yamas are the basic rules or principles on which community or existence operates. If uh, entities, living entities stop following these niyamas, uh, there will not be order in community, family or in nature. That is why Patanjali Maharshi call these yamas as Mahavratas the uh, obligations or duties which are to be followed in all stages and all conditions of life. These yamas help us to align ourselves with the community or with the nature and uh, uh, these set the boundary condition in that way they manage our emotions because once the boundary conditions are set naturally our emotions are channelized. Niyamas which are uh, Shaucha, Santosh, Swadhyay, Ishwar Pranidhan, they maintain and cleanse our inner conditions. Shauch is related to the external cleansing as well, otherwise Swadhyay, Santosh, Ishwar Pranidhan, these are all related to managing our mind and managing and controlling our mind. And maintaining the inner interiority in such a way where our mind can be directed towards functional and harmonious objectives. Asanas, we discussed asanas in great detail and we also looked at asanas as psychosomatic interventions because when we perform asanas, it is not only useful, it is not only very good for our physical self, not only useful for our body to remain flexible, it also helps our mind to maintain itself better. It also uh, generates a kind of a pleasantness in our mind and how it does that? It does that by bringing coherence uh, in the brain waves by lowering the stress hormones and releasing the happy hormones. Then comes pranayam, uh, rhythmic breathing and different types of pranayams we discussed in the previous session and its unique uh, property. Breath is by definition a voluntary activity, but we cannot live without it. So, breath controls and connects our sympathetic and parasympathetic system it connects our interiority with exteriority. So, by managing our breath as it is done in pranayam, we can uh, experience the relaxation and we can regulate our mind. Uh, pratyahar that is a sense withdrawal, prati ahar means instead of enjoying our senses through the outside goods and things, uh, 
reflecting back our senses towards interiority and that is like stepping back purposefully and that helps us to maintain a limited stimulants that helps us to maintain a limited exposure to the stimulants and uniform exposure to the stimulants and that brings calmness and equanimity of mind. Dharana that is one pointedness that is the source of self mastery. When I am able to remain focused on my dharma, when I am able to remain focused on the thought, I am able to perform my dharma or I am able to create which is the potential of the thought. So, dharana brings a kind of purposefulness to our mind, to our personality and purposefulness is extremely important for our mind to get managed. The most dis, uh, harmful thing we can do to our mind which in turn be harmful to our overall self is not remaining focused. So, obviously, the most helpful thing to manage our mind is to identify the purpose and remaining focused on that. Then comes dhyan, quietening of mind. In the quietitude of mind, great things emerge. So, that is the space of intelligence, that is the source of intelligence and samadhi is the source of bliss uh, that is about transcending emotions and individualized cognition. Cognition happens in the state of samadhi, but that is not individualized, that is not limited to my individual identity. It is of different kind of cognition uh, and that becomes the source of bliss and uh, transcendence. So, you can see that all limbs of yoga help us to manage emotional balance and manage our mind. The question is how mind actually gets entangled and, and what is the ideal state of mind? These answers are given in the second uh, chapter of uh, Yoga Sutra. It says that uh, Swaswami Shaktyo Yoga, the union of the Purusha and Prakriti the constant integrated uh, awareness that is purusha and prakriti which is the manifestation that that which is uh, made up of guna and dosha when the combination and mer merging of identity happens of purusha and prakriti that is the uh, that is the cause that causes the realization of nature that causes the self awareness and from there itself avidya emerges, tasya hetur vidya, ignorance is in the cause of this association, this union. What happens in that association? We remain deeply identified with the, with this association. We remain deeply identified with the prakriti, with our gunas and doshas. We do not identify ourselves with the purusha. So, uh, tat abhavat sanyoga abhava hanam tat drashi kevalam. That means the seizing of that union is the ideal condition, han that is the ideal condition. So, there being absence of ignorance, there is absence of union and which is the thing to be avoided? That is the state of the liberation of the seer. So, han which is adarsh sthiti, ideal state. What is that ideal state? That is a seizing of the connection, a unconscious uh, union of prakriti and purusha. When the han is achieved in the adarsh sthiti, in the ideal state, viveka khyati, how that han is achieved? What is the way of achieving that ideal state? The way of attaining ideal state is viveka khyati. 
clear and distinct discriminative knowledge, which can distinguish prakriti and purusha. That is viveka khyati and that is called hanopaya. Upaya means way, han is adarsh or ideal, way of achieving ideal according to yoga sutra is viveka khyati. And what happens in the viveka khyati? What, what are the sign of attainment of viveka khyati? That sign is saptadha pranta bhumi pragya, the wisdom of seven type. We are going to look at what are those seven types of wisdom. Viveka khyati is achieved. This is reflected in uh, attainment of the seven types of wisdom. His, the yogi who has acquired discriminative enlightenment, knowledge is of the sevenfold highest ground. Pranta bhumi is the ground, pragya meaning wisdom, saptadha means seven types, tasya is his. So, the, when the hanupaya happens, viveka khyati is achieved, seven types of wisdom arise and that can happen by following eight limbs of yoga. A yoganga nushthanat ashuddhi chaye jnana deepti aveveka khyate. By practice of the limbs of yoga, the impurity is being destroyed, knowledge becomes engulfed up to discrimination. That is the uh, uh, translation we have taken from the book of uh, uh, Bihar school of yoga, Mungev. Most of the translation are actually taken uh, from the books of the Bihar school of uh, yoga as located in Mungir.